Today on Good Knit Kisses, fold over baby booties with a twist. These baby booties are inspired by a simple fold over slipper design, but added color pop in a braided rope accent. The braid is inspired by Latvian braids with a clever twist to get the rope to pop on top of the garter stitch and add a nice texture. Today we're going to make three different sizes here on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. For yarn, you're going to need a number four weight yarn, 30 yards for contrast A and eight to 10 yards for contrast B. I'm using Red Heart Sheep Sheep. My A is color linen and B is color Mai Tai and that's for these booties over here. And for these booties, I've used color lace, which is more white, and color VIP, which is more of a navy blue. You can use other four weight yarns as well for this. You're also going to need a tapestry needle, scissors, a loom tool, and of course your loom. We're using a small gauge 3 8 of an inch peg spacing from center peg to center peg. These are a couple of different looms would work. I'm using in my sample the KB Looms Baby Knit Looms Round Baby Loom Set. This is 56 pegs. You only need from 28 to 44 pegs to make any one of the three sizes. Pictured here is the Sock Loom 2 from Knitting Board. And uh, you could also use the all-in-one loom. To get the pattern, click on the link in the description below. All right, let's go over the pattern for a moment before we move on. Uh, we've already gone over the materials. I do wanna say that this is an easy plus pattern, so if you are a um, ultra beginner, you may want to um, practice a bit more before you move on to this pattern because we are gonna do a little bit more advanced things in here. We're doing a two color long tail cast on and then this half Latvian braid, which we have spelled it out if you wanna see it all written out. We go, will go over everything in the video, so you can absolutely do this. The skills you need to know are knowing how to cast on and bind off plus knitting and purling, and we'll go over everything together. The gauge is four and a half stitches and 11 rows per inch in garter stitch. Garter stitch is a bit stretchier stitch, so when it comes to these measurements on sizes, you can actually, um, if say if I measure two and a half inches long on my baby, baby booty, I can pick the size that's uh, down a little bit because it will stretch. The three sizes are zero to three month, three to six month, and six to 12 month. All right, let's scroll down here. I do want to say I recommend using a butterfly bobbin because the half Latvian braid does get a little bit twisted up if you use a larger ball. And we've got a link to show you how to do that. And uh, we'll be referring to these instructions off to the side, but you can see how we've got uh, cast on. You can see three different numbers here, 28, 34, and 44. The first number is your cast on for the smallest size. The second number and the third number, of course, are the second and third sizes. And then we will have notes in parentheses down further for row repeats and things like that. So you're going to want to keep that in mind and keep that pattern near you for reference. You can circle it with a pencil or highlight it. And further down, we've got uh, seaming instructions for the booty and a diagram. So if you'd rather see that um, written out, we've got that all for you. All right, grab your supplies. You will need two colors to make this long tail cast on. See you in a moment. The two color long tail cast on has this really pretty accent on it. And what's nice about it is I don't have to guess how much yarn uh, or measure out how much yarn I need to pre wrap all my pegs like a normal long tail cast on. You simply just make a slip knot and then start uh, working with it. And I'll describe how to do it in just a moment here. Now for this one, because we are seaming together a baby booty, I'm gonna have you pull out more yarn of uh, color A or the main color. So I'm gonna grab Grab my lighter color here and pull out about 18 inches and then have about a six inch tail in the um, color B, the accent color. Now make your slip knot however you like and then you're just going to place it right on the loom and I've already marked peg one. It doesn't matter where on your loom that is but you'll notice uh, this is my peg one and then I have the slip knot uh, next to it that's because we're actually not going to use it later and it'll end up coming off so we're going to cast on either 28 stitches for the smallest booty 34 for the medium and 44 for the large okay so I've already marked 28 over here with this last peg and you don't have to um, use a stitch marker. Uh, this is just for demo purposes. And then this tail here just uh, kind of comes underneath. You can just hold it there and ignore it. Okay. 
So make sure that your accent color or color B is kind of towards the front. And you're going to remember you're only going to E-wrap this color. Just E-wrap. This color back here is color A and it's going to kind of stay in the back and you're only going to U-wrap knit that. So the first peg you're just going to E-wrap with B and then take A and U-wrap knit that. I'm just going to hold it in the back and knit off. So lift up and over and then we're going to pull on B to get that nice and tight. Okay, take B again, E-wrap. Take A and you wrap knit that. And sometimes when I do it, it makes that kind of loose. So we're just going to make it tight. And after we go and get all of our stitches on, I like to come back through. See, I'm tightening this uh, B up as I go, but I like to come back through and go ahead and tighten up A as well, just on the long tail uh, for a nice clean look. And I'll show you what that will look like. You won't have to do any tightening up later. Look how pretty that looks. Okay, so that's what the accent's gonna look like. Go ahead and cast on your uh, stitches, 28 stitches, 34 or 44 for all three sizes, and uh, pause your video, I'll meet you back up for row one. See you soon. Okay, after you've cast it on, come back over to the slip knot and go ahead and take this off right now. And then you just pull on your yarn and it'll pull that little slip knot out. And I've gone ahead and just kind of rolled this up just so I know not to work with that and it's not in the way. Come back over to my first peg on row one and we are going to purl all the way across. So all stitches you will purl and then you're going to um, work your way back um, with knitting. So we're going to purl a row all the way to the end and then knit a row and we'll meet back up here. But first, let's go ahead and pull this yarn and I wanna make sure that this color B gets trapped in right. So we wanna make sure and pull our um, color A around underneath color B. So I'm just gonna actually pick color B up and do this. And what it does is it kinda traps it in the back like this. So make sure your work kinda traps this here and then um, it's just set up in the right spot uh, when we seam together some stuff later on. It doesn't seem like you're doing much now, but just go ahead and do that. All right, go ahead and purl. So if you never purl, let's do a couple together and then you move on. We're going to put our yarn down below the peg and pull up, making a loop. Lift off the old and replace the new loop on and then pull. So let's do that again. Yarn down below the loop. Pull up like you're picking a pearl from the ocean. Pull off the loop, put the new one on, and pull. You're gonna do that all the way across to the last one. So purl one row and then knit, come all the way back to here, pause and we'll meet you back up, and start the Latvian braid. See you soon. I've just finished row one and I wanted to show you that uh, this first stitch was a little bit loose and I had to pull on my slip knot here, the old slip knot, and make sure to tighten it up first. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do the uh, knit row here. You're just U wrap knitting, so we're just going to go around the front and to the back and lift up and over, and that's all you do for the U wrap knit. It's just like when we cast it on. Just a U wrap and move on. All right. Continue working along and I'll see you for row three. See you soon. All right, I've got a different position here because we're gonna go into the half Latvian braid and we do something a little bit different than you may have seen before. All right, so we're going to be um, purling across, so that's the main stitch we're doing, but we've gotta move the yarn around in a very specific way. You have to do it this way in order to get it to get this uh, braid on top. Okay, so this is the part we're doing right now. We're gonna work with both colors. Make sure and grab this white yarn from underneath the colored yarn or your accent yarn. Um, you need to pull this from underneath. So I'm actually gonna pull my accent yarn and kind of pick it up and move it around uh, so that I can have my um, A come from under B. See how it kind of locks it in? Don't pull too tight right now. Um, just It's just to get um, that kind of locked in. And again, this is for seaming purposes later on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, come around to the front just as if to purl, and we are. And then we're going to uh, pull up a purl just like normal. All right, now this is where it changes. Go ahead and grab your um, little bobbin or your yarn B and pull it to the front and we're gonna move it 
in the same direction as the other one. So as soon as we pick up our purl loop, you're going to place yarn B behind peg one, and then you're gonna place yarn A right on top of it. See how they're just lined up and they're gonna go right down. I'm gonna put the loop back on the peg, and then we're going to pull with A, and that's all we're doing. Now, we're going to pull yarn B from underneath A. So all we have to do is just grab this bobbin and it, now it's twisted properly. We're going to purl with B now. So pull up a loop. When we pick up this loop, we place A down below B and then replace the loop and then pull on B or your accent to tighten that up. Okay, so now we have purled both colors. We're gonna switch it up again. Now we're going to make color A come from under color B. So in order to do that, we wanna pull this color A from under B. Now, if we just keep moving that only and not moving the bobbin, you're going to get twisted yarn. You're going to get everything twisted up where the ball is. So the bobbin actually makes it easier to pull it from underneath. So if I pull this from underneath, it'll get twisted, but if I move my bobbin this way, it's not twisted, okay? So go ahead and uh, purl with A, lift up the purl, place the color you're not using down below, and then replace the loop, and then pull, okay? Now we wanna pull B from underneath the bobbin, and we're going to purl with B, all right? Pick up the loop, Put the yarn we're not working with down below and place it down and then pull on B. Okay? Do it again. Move the bobbin over so you're pulling A from underneath B. Purl, making a loop. Lift up the loop. Put the work, yarn you're not using down below. Okay? And then pull on the yarn that you just used. Do you see how when we do that, it's alternating it? Now you can't see the great work you're doing from behind. It just looks normal. It, it doesn't have a, and in fact, it's like the opposite of doing a fair isle. It looks actually nicer in the back here. And then in the front, what you can't see is it's getting twisted. Let's see if you can see it in here. It's kind of dark, but you can see it's getting twisted like a rope. And this is what it looks like on the other one. So after we've knitted some, it'll look like this later on. And this is the right side. So this is what you're doing right here. And you locked in that color right here before when you were twisting that yarn to go up. This part will end up getting sewn into your booty down along the front edge. All right, so just gonna continue all the way until you get to the end here. And then uh, we'll pick back up and tell you the directions for the rest of the booty. All right, pause your video and I will see you soon. Be sure and grab all your yarn from down underneath, okay? See you soon. Okay, I'm on my last stitch and it's B. I'm gonna make sure and go ahead and move A to the back again so it's in the right position. All right, so now we're going to be working two rows with uh, B, okay? So this is this area right here, okay? So we're gonna have a uh, knit row and then we'll work back and we'll do a purl row. So we're making a one garter stitch ridge right here. Okay, so before you move on, we're gonna do this thing where we're trapping that yarn through. So we wanna pull B from underneath A. So we're just gonna grab that here and pull it on through. And just make sure you've ended with color B and you've got every other stitch in those colors because this would be the part to make any um, changes or fixes in uh, your work because from here on out, it's actually much easier. All right, so we're going to uh, knit this first stitch with the U-wrap knit, okay? So work all the way back, knitting a row and then purling a row. Pause your video and I'll meet you back up at this point here. See you soon. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut our yarn now that we're done. And we're going to switch back to color A. All right, and you're just going to be knitting across. And it's oh, a little loose there. So just uh, knit across one row, and then you'll, you will um, purl back here, okay? So row six is knit and row seven is purl, all with A. So everything here on out is A. You're gonna repeat rows six and seven three more times, 
for the smallest size uh, four more times for the medium size and five more times for the largest size. So this one is actually what we're, we're working on for the smallest size. You're going to actually end up with four ridges, one, two, three, four of these garter stitch ridges for the smallest size. And then you'll have um, one more uh, set of long ridges for the medium and one more set for the large. And then we'll come back and uh, make this T-shape. So right now you're working on it and uh, it'll look like this when we're ready to move on. And uh, pause your video and when we meet back up, we will bind off the stitches and work on the rest of it together. See you soon. All right, we're ready to make the bottom edge of our booty. That's the bottom edge right here, uh, right before we start making the sole, okay? And we are going to be binding off some stitches uh, from this side over to about here, and then we'll work the rest of the row knitting it. And then on the next row, we'll be binding off stitches to here, and then we only have these middle stitches to start forming this small little panel for the sole of our foot. All right, so if you have a stitch marker, it's a really good idea to just go ahead and mark the stitches that I'm gonna tell you about. So for the small, we're going to count out 10 stitches. So count out 10 across here. And then on the 11th one, put a marker. So just pick up your stitch and place a marker here. And then go to the other side and count off the same amount. So 10 stitches here, and then place a marker on the 11th one, okay? So for the small, you're gonna mark off 10. For the medium, mark off 13. And for the uh, large, you're going to mark off 17. And then go from the other side and do the same numbers, 10, 13, and 17. Okay, so we're going to bind them off, just a regular knit bind off. We're going to knit the first stitch, okay? Knit up and over and knit the second one. And then we move the second stitch to the first. This is just the standard basic bind off. And then lift up and over to knit off that stitch. And then we pick it up and we move it to the empty peg and then continue on. So I'm gonna continue working once you pause your video and I will meet you back up right at this marker. All right, we'll see you in just a moment. Okay, we're on our last one and I've knit this one that has the placed marker on there. Okay, lift up and over and move this last stitch here. So we've completely bound off all 10 of those. So now you are just going to continue. Um, you've already worked this as a knit stitch, so you'll just continue knitting to the end of your row, okay? So you should have a total of um, the, uh, this amount of pegs on here. So this total for the small, you'll have 18 stitches left. For the medium, it's a uh, it's 21 stitches left and it's 27 for the large. So you can go ahead and count your stitches just to make sure you've got them all right. All right. And then when we get to the end here, we'll start working on row nine. Pause your video as you need. Okay, we're gonna knit this first stitch now to work on row nine and then knit the second stitch and we're gonna start binding off all the way up until that other stitch marker. So we're moving the two onto the one. We're just doing it in the opposite direction. And that's all we do. So we knit the second stitch, move it onto the first, knit off, and move it over. There we go. And just keep going until you have uh, worked them all and you're at this marker here. All right, pause your video and I will meet you at that point. See you soon. Okay, we're continuing on with row nine. We've bound off all these stitches, and now for the remainder of the stitches, we're just going to purl. So just continue purling. Uh, for the small and the medium sizes, you will have a total of eight stitches left, and for the larger size, you'll have a total of 10 stitches left. This first one has already been worked when you were binding off. It actually was a knit stitch, uh, but that's okay. So we're just gonna purl. And then when you are complete with that, we will start working on making some more garter ridges. Let's place this back on here. There we go. All right. All right, so now we have completed row nine, and now we want to do the booty sole. That's this bottom part here. 
And so we're just going to be working back and forth. So we're going to be repeating row six of knitting and row seven of purling. For this size, which is the small, you need to do it um, repeating rows six to seven ten times. Okay, so that means that you're going to have uh, ten of these ridges. Okay, so repeating ten times is not ten rows, it's actually rows six and seven ten times. So for the small, that's ten times to repeat. For, it's 16 for medium size and 22 times for the large. So row six is knit, row seven is purl. Repeat that 10 times, 16 times, or 22 times for your size of booty. And um, pause your video. I will meet you back up when you get to the end there. And we will start back up at row 10 and decrease. Pause your video and I will see you there. Okay, we're going to make our toe decrease. And this is row 10. We're going to knit the first stitch. Okay. And then we're going to knit two together, K2 tog. So you actually pick up the stitch on this side and move it right here, okay? And that is going to make a uh, right leaning decrease or knit two together. I'm gonna pick up this stitch that we just worked and just move it to the empty peg and we're just moving it inward. And then I'm just going to knit these two stitches together, just like that, okay? And then I'm going to work uh, the stitches in between, which is two of them. Now, if you have the larger size, then you're going to have four stitches in the middle here. And then you've got, you're basically working into the last three pegs. The last three pegs, you're going to knit these two together. So you actually want to move um, this first stitch on top of this other one. You can just lift this one up and then move the stitch over and place it here. And then you work these two stitches together. Now you could move this stitch on top of this one and then knit it and it becomes an SSK or a left leaning decrease. So we'd have a left and a right leaning decrease. It doesn't actually matter for this one. It gets hidden and um, we're not doing any specific shaping. So now we just want to uh, knit this last stitch. You can go ahead and knit it and then just move it over. Okay. And so now you should have six stitches on the two smallest sizes, the small and medium, and then um, eight stitches left on the um, the larger size. Okay, so now row 11, just go ahead and, uh, whoops, I, I knitted that. Uh, those uh, This row 11, you're just going to uh, purl. So just purl across all stitches and you will be ready to uh, bind off and then you'll want to weave in all your ends of your accent color, your color B. And I suggest weaving in color B first um, because you're not going to use that for seaming and sewing in like we will um, to finish off the booty. Okay, so see how this booty is done here? I went ahead and uh, wove those all in. So go ahead and bind off. You just knit the first two stitches, move the second on top of the first, and knit over, and then move that. So just as normal, uh, just as you, you did before. And then on the very last stitch, um, you will just um, cut your yarn and knit uh, over that last stitch and pull the remaining through. We'll go ahead and do that together here, just because I have so few stitches. Okay, knit over. All right, go ahead and um, knit this one over, and then we're going to pull through this yarn here. And we're going to do an 18 inch tail so we've got enough to sew with. And just pull this one on through. All right, and there we have it. And this is ready to start sewing in. You want to um, weave in your accent color, okay? So your color B, and then uh, you'll use a tapestry needle to sew this in. All right, so I have actually done a video for needle knitting and we did these needle knit booties and I've already got um, the sewing part ready for you. The only difference in this video is my cast on strand is on the opposite side. Uh, so for the right-handed video, if you're watching the right-handed video, you'll see this, um, this strand here on the correct, um, I'm sorry, on the opposite side as you see right now. 
and then on the left-handed video it'll actually be just fine it doesn't really matter it's just a matter of where it falls and you're going to be sewing in with this long tail so uh, in the next part of the video we're going to show you uh, sewing this in together and you're going to make um, one handed this way and one handed the opposite way all right so to assemble our baby booty we need to know a few things we have a right and a left baby booty okay so this is the right and we're going to have a little accent on the right side and then the left will be over on the left side so depending upon how you sew it together it will make a right and left so we have our little t here and uh, this is um, going to be uh, the right side of my booty and this is going to be the left side so when we flip it over you can see the right the correct side or right side is facing down the right side of the fabric but the left side of the actual booty is over here and we flip it over so the edge here lines up with the toe of the sole okay this is the footbed and this is the sole of the foot we're going to the toe so toe to toe and we want to sew together this toe to the uh, side of the sole okay and we're just going to use this yarn that's attached put in our needle and start sewing and then once we sew this side we just sew the other one and fold it over this way so when we want to make the opposite we just do it the opposite and we flip flop it so let's go ahead and sew this side together and then you just repeat on the other side uh, it's attached up top so we want to attach it down below and then come back up from up top and the one that you sew down first is not going to be seen so um, this is a great way to uh, check how you're working on it this first edge you can just kind of play with it and make sure you're doing it right I make sure and grab um, not just one strand but go through two here okay make sure I've got a good um, uh, a good foundation I'm gonna go up through these two stitches here that looks like a V it's kind of facing like that and then we're going to go up through these stitches here and just continue sewing just go along see that one came out of here so we're going to go on this next one and just keep going along and leave this other tail alone and I'm just doing a whip stitch so I'm going up through both stitches and then I pull it and go around the front and that just makes a little whip stitch okay and then make sure my corners are nice and joined and it looks different when I start going around the corner here so let's just turn this now okay so um, when I get over here, you can see that I've got the edge of where my bind off is and it's got those two nice stitches, but then I just have these little bumps from the pearl bumps. We're just gonna grab one pearl bump edge and go up through where these little V's are, okay? So I'm just gonna go through this outside pearl bump edge here and then go up through my first set of V's, okay? And then go to the next one. There's another pearl bump. And then there's another V. Okay. And if you're not sure, just kind of pull back and go, okay, well, I was just here. So I'm going to go on this one. Go through my V. And just continue going all the way up until I'm out of stitches. So pause your video and I'll meet you back at the end right here and show you where to go from after that. See you soon. All right, coming down to the end, I just have a few stitches left. There's actually a little bitty hole right here. So I wanna make sure that I get all of it. And that's that last V there. Okay, so I'm gonna go um, Put my finger inside here and kind of push that out and I'm gonna take my yarn and go on the, the inside with my needle and pull it through and so it doesn't have this really pokey side on it it's nice and smooth go to the inside and I can start uh, weaving in the end of my tail here Okay. And if you have a long enough tail, you can actually um, go all the way up to the other side and start stitching in that way. I actually do. So uh, I'm going to just get my yarn to the other side here.
All right. So now I'm on the other side with my yarn and uh, I can turn this down and start working along this side over here. Okay, so I'm actually going to work along this side and then seam together this part here. But before I do, an added extra measure, if you want to, you can actually take this yarn here and stitch down a few stitches on the inside and let this toe uh, kind of be um, stitched in a little bit that way, a little bit more secure. So you can go ahead and do that now or leave it out um, and do a custom fit. All right, so I'm going to continue sewing along this edge. And if this yarn is too short, you can just use this yarn to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go through this bump here and go through this first little V-stitch and this bump and this V-stitch. And when you do this, it doesn't make a, um, a ridge on the inside. It's still nice and smooth for baby's foot. All right, so just continue to work along. Pause your video, and I'll meet you back up at the toe section. See you soon. All right, so I'm down at the end, and um, I've got the toe of both of them that I need to connect to. It's got this rest of this little bump here. So I'm just gonna go through this last little V-stitch that I've got. A little bit snugger here. There we go. Pull it on through, and now we can just tack this on down and start sewing along here. Uh, or you can bring this on the inside and sew together this part here. This is completely up to you, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and I just kind of do a, a quickie little um, a whip stitch just around the tops of these stitches on the inside here, just for a few stitches. And I just want to make sure baby's feet are nice and snug, the little toes are nice and snug. Okay, and so I'm gonna go ahead and clip that. It's also a nice place to just weave in that tail. And I'm gonna finish this last one up. It helps to have both of these strands nice because when you flip them over, you may choose to start in a different place with these uh, long tails and it makes it a bit easier. All right, so go ahead and fold this one down and I'm gonna go ahead and come up. Now, what, one, whatever's on the uh, top side, I wanna make sure and come up through the very edge of my cast on. See that right there? When I pull that down, it's gonna straighten out that line, okay? Because it was a little bit um, wonky. It needs, it needs to be grounded right there. So I just go right up through both of those stitches and pull it down, and then I'll come back through that same area and then go through the next part, which is right where that little rope is. And now this is nice and secure and keep going in that whip stitch. I'm just going in the opposite direction that I had done before to secure this toe. All right, and that is it. So now we just wanna weave in the rest of this tail. We can go right on the inside and turn our booty over and just go and make the duplicate stitch right on the inside. And that's it. So when you're done, before you clip off your yarn, uh, the best way to finish that off is to uh, split the yarn uh, on the next stitch that you wanna stop. So I'm gonna go back down through this one and then I'm gonna split this yarn here, right in between that last stitch and go ahead and cut it. And there we have our cute little baby booty. So you've got your small, your medium, and here is our largest one. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today and uh, be sure and tag us on Instagram at Goodnit Kisses. I would love to see your baby booties and what colors you chose. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.